Hi, I'm going to show you my gray water system. I started from the gutters, made sure all the gutters went to one location on the property. Then I put a wire mesh screen over the gutters to keep debris from uh, going in. For the washing machine, I plumbed a pipe to the French drain. I also kept the sewer should I have um, items that I want to bleach that I don't want to go to the property. You need to have a uh, environmentally friendly soap. We have selected Ecos. It's purchased um, from Henry's and it's very reasonably priced. About 17 cents a load. There are items that you can buy on the internet like Extreme 18 or a Shackley brand uh, is very good that has no salts and no phosphates. Ecos is the best value. We plumbed the piping uh, to the French drain, quite simply. From the washing machine into the French drain, once again, the gutters. I put this uh, screen in uh, to prevent leaves from going down into the sump tank. Very easily maintained. A 50 gallon drum. This is the rear gutters uh, in through the French drain. And here's the front gutters, front side of the house, and brought down from uh, downspout up forward. This is the freshwater side of the shower, and this is the bottom of the shower. I was just going to do fresh water at first, but it's just not enough water in this uh, terribly dry climate. So, the gray water comes in from the shower. I'm saving about 600 gallons per week. The freshwater side of the shower, I'm going to plumb horizontally and put a tank to receive that fresh water. It takes five gallons of water to heat up the shower. So every time we take a shower, it's five extra gallons that we can divert from this tank into the toilets. You don't want to have gray water going into the toilets because gray water does have a residual smell uh, from the laundry detergent. We have a cast iron hydromatic sump pump that pumps it up into a thousand gallon storage tank. If I don't want the water to go into the storage tank. I have a diverter. I turn this off, turn this on, and the water will go out and down into the sewer. This is a backflow preventer, uh, a must-have uh, to keep the water that's up in this line from coming back down into the sump tank, causing the sump pump to work too hard. A 30 micron filter, which I purchased from Granger.com at a very reasonable price, easily maintained with detachable fittings here. I can take these off, unscrew the lid after closing this valve, of course, clean the filter, put it back in, secure these, turn this back on, 
and we're in business. This is a self-contained uh, pump uh, made by Grunfos uh, to apply, apply pressure to the sprinkler system. It provides pressure to the risers, almost as much as city water, but not quite. But the more I transfer all my sprinkler heads to micro sprinklers, uh, the pressure difference is not even going to be noticeable. It's very quiet in its operation. When the sprinkler uh, riser comes on, it detects the water flow and the pump comes on automatically. When the water flow, when this closes, the water flow uh, stops, the pump goes off automatically. You'll need electricity. And so I plumb the electricity from the risers. You'll notice there's two, one for gray water and the risers for the city. Take your nearest junction box and tie into it and run the electricity to where you have the sump tank. Program A is city water, so if I want the water to come straight from the city, I supply it with program A. If I want gray water, I select program B. There's three stations for city, three stations for gray water. Fortunately, I had six total stations. I did not have to replace my box. So that's my gray water system in a nutshell. Highly recommend going zero scape as much as you can. Put flex tubing uh, directly to the plants you want to water. Get away from the large sprinkler heads that waste water. Thank you for your time, and that's my gray water system.